Hi guys! In today's video I'm going to do a share with some of the things I've created over the last few months but I have not filmed so you have not seen. If you follow me on Instagram or on my blog you will have seen some of these things already but not everything because not everything's posted yet. Eventually I'll get it all posted. The first thing I'm going to share with you is a tag and this is just one of the large tags that you can get. I think it's Ranger or there's another company and I cannot remember who right now sells these big manila tags. And all I did was take a bunch of extra scraps that were laying on my desk and threw them on the tag so that I could get rid of them and use them and then have something that I kind of thought was pretty to show for it. And some of these pieces here were a result of stuff I didn't use on this journal that I'm about to show you. So let me back up just a shade. Okay, so these are just die cuts, some burlap, some extra fabric strips, a key die cut, some extra trim, uh, not trim, fabric strips, and this is gauze, and I just slid it through, and I covered the background with some of that paper I've been trying to use up, and some of you know what paper that is, and you'll see more of that later in the video. And the back is plain, I just signed it and put a little strip down here, a paper bag. So that's one thing. Another thing that I finished up was these three birds. And you have seen these type of things already. I showed you some birds I made before, and I showed you some bunnies, and I showed you an elephant. And there is a process video about how I come up with the process of making these, the concept, but the video is about making the elephant, not the birds or the bunnies. So that's those. The next thing is this journal and it is made from burlap. The burlap comes this wide and it's a long roll and I just tore off how much I needed and honestly I don't even know if I could remember how I made this because I just threw it together with anything laying around just to use up some paper and I used up these papers in here and see this twine, this fiber runs through each signature to help hold it on and then I used fabric strips here and I took this fiber it was laying on my desk and I just glued it to the burlap and the pieces wrapped around the signature tie over here but I had so much left I just laid it around and glued it down kinda of simple really but hard to explain and then there's more fabric strips here and some lace and then I just wrap it around this way and an old button and then this tag is just one of my tags that I keep in my box that has deli papers and drop papers and newsprint and tags and index cards where they're just extra paint like these here I keep around with extra paint thrown on them and then later on I come back and use them and this just has extra paint on it and I did some scribbling and I just glued it on here the way it was I did not finish it didn't do anything else to it except add a little piece of fabric here and this little piece of lace and a button and I just thought it was really cute and this trim here I had an extra piece so I just glued it along the back and that's pretty much it the other things I did were these beaded things uh, one is a heart I just took wire and made a shape of a heart and I wrapped wire around it again with beads attached to it and fibers and fabric wrapped around it and I put a big bead here and I just hang it on one of my little dresser knobs here just for fun it's just colorful I liked it and then these you've seen before these you have not these are pins that I made and someone asked me ways that I use my beads that I made I made fabric beads and there's a video about that this is one of the ways I use them and there's also a few other ways I'm going to show you. I already showed you one where I use them on charms and there is a video about that. But these are just hat pins or corsage pins and I stuck a bead up on here, glued it and now I can use it in a journal or I can just use it here for display, whatever I want. The thing about these is they come, these came with a green top like this and I didn't like it for all the beads this one's not finished I was gonna do this on video for you but I, I never did so that's why it's not glued but they came like this and what I did is I took the tops and I painted them with some of the alcohol inks and I changed the color so this was originally green and it's no longer green so it matches more the bead color that I have on here and here's another one that's painted this used to be green 
not on camera. And some of them are white, and I left them white, or I painted them. And let's see if there's one. This might have been a white one. I'm not sure. It's hard to remember now. And this is one of the fabric beads. I just glued it on. So I'm just right now have them stored here. That's where I keep them. These were white that I didn't change the color of the top. And I'm not going to pick out all of them and show you. I think you can get the idea. So these were a lot of fun. Very therapeutic to make. Very easy. This one I kind of not finished with. But I put some different color green beads on here to go because this had a green top. I didn't really love it, but I'm, so I may change it. Then I just glued it to a piece of burlap. I kind of intertwined it and glued it. And it may go, it was going to originally go on this, this journal here, but I decided against it. So until I decide what I want to do with it, it just sort of sits on my desk or I can just stick it right there. Let me grab the next thing I, I did and share it with you. So this is one of the things that you will have seen on Instagram or my blog. These are little bracelets that I made. I was in the mood one day for some more muted colors. And so I just played around with some wire. And I came up with this bracelet here. And I just kind of made it to the size of my wrist and wrapped fabric around it and wire again to, to seal it, to uh, make it sharp, secure. Um, no, I didn't add another wire. There's one layer of wire twice around, I think. And this is some twine and a little bee charm. And it just slides on pretty easy. I didn't make it real loose because I didn't want it to come off easily. So, but it can go on and off. And this one here just has a little, I think a lobster claw clasp or whatever. I don't know the names of jewelry pieces, so forgive me for that. But there's a little clasp I put on there. And this is elastic with wooden beads. And this one here is wire with fabric around it again and some fibers and some beads that I took a long string of monofilament and beaded a lot of little beads. I'm trying to use up my beads and things and boy, it takes forever. You think when you buy stuff that stuff's going to go fast because you like it, it does, it lasts forever. So I still have a bunch of these beads I need to use up. So that's what these are. And then this is just garment hooks and you can um, if you lose a button on your shirt you can put it this on put your button back on your shirt temporarily through the buttonhole until you can get it sewed back on but I just took some beads and put it on each garment hook except one and you unhook it and I can put it on and wear it if I want to so those have been posted on my blog for you to see and on Instagram these are kind of ornaments you can use them as Christmas ornaments you can make them in Christmas colors I didn't because why would I? I never stick by the rules. <laughs> so, But I think you can make these as little ornaments just to hang in your art room just for fun. Or you can hang it on a journal or glue it to the front of a journal like this. Like here's a journal that I throw extra paint in. Once I finish it, I could attach it here or here and it could just be pretty sitting on my little journal here. Anyway, um, these are wire and as I wrapped, I left a little see if you can see it. A little piece of wire as a hook right there for hanging my ribbon on. But after making the wire the, the circle size that I wanted, I wrapped it with fibers and fabric and ribbons and tied things on and added wire with more beads and then just added my little ribbons to hang with. So I'll just go through these kind of quickly and let you see them. This is a good way to use up some of your beads and some of your ribbons and fibers. And I'm just hanging them right now. I'll, I hang them in a cluster on one of my little dress forms on the wall. And they're pretty to look at. I like this one, silver and purples. This one's really pretty too. I love the colors. And this one is a little bit longer hook. I don't know why. It just happened. And it's green wire. Some are black, some are silver, but this one's green for some reason. I love this one too. And I think this was the first one I made and it doesn't have one of those wire hooks so you can just take a piece of string, tie it, and then just loop it together like you would on a tag and hang it that way. And save yourself from having to make the, the little loop. So right now I have them all hanging like this together. So they drape like this. And I just think they're pretty to look at. So let's go to the next thing. Okay, so if you've been with me for a little while 
in one of my videos, you probably remember me putting down a bunch of body parts in front of you and saying, guess what these are going to be? <laughs> and so this is what they became, little primitive dolls. The thing about these is I did not go the extra mile. I was going to go and make them really grungy primitive because after I got them dressed, I was going to put them through a grungy process. And I just decided not to. I kind of ran out of the oomph to do it. I was dealing with Bailey at the time, and so I was lucky to get these done as far as I did, but I still think they turned out cute. They kind of got a they kind of got a country primitive look. So I'm just gonna go through and show you each one. There's three different doll patterns, or four possibly, I can't remember. I just traced out some some patterns, uh, shapes, and went with it. I think she was my first one. Let me come up a little bit higher. Here's the first one. And I will show you just the front. And here's another way I use my beads. I just attach the bead to her hands. So she's holding one. One of the fabric beads I told you about. That someone asked, what do you do with them? Um, this is another design. It's just a little one. She's got little safety pins hanging. A little button that's an old button. You could make these ornaments. You could stick a little thing back here and hang them on your Christmas tree if you wanted to. Or hang them in, oops, sorry about that. Or hang them in your art room. Here's another one of the first designs I showed you, and this is a little bead again. She's holding a bead. It's got little pantaloons. These are old buttons. Not old. These are porcelain buttons that my mother had from some work she used to do with a company that made jumpers, and they used these porcelain buttons, and I, she had a lot left over, and when she passed away, I wound up with them, so I thought I'd use a few on the dolls. Here's a different design, different doll pattern. She's a different shape. A little bit chunkier and there's one of the beads right there wrapped around her waist just as a little belt and some more safety pins and little old buttons there this is another shape different design she's holding some buttons in her hand and then I just took a piece of scrap fabric laying on my desk and I pinned it to her body <laughs> just little stuff doesn't have to be anything special this is another design I only made one of this one and one of that other chunky one I like this other one, this other size better. Um, this one's really chunky and she's holding some old buttons just stringed from her little pen there. This is another one of those fabric beads that I made. Here's another skinny little one. Just tie a little bow, pull up a little dress here so you can see her pantaloon here, or a little skirt. Here's another one. And here's another one of the fabric beads. There's this one, holding our buttons, and this one, she's got some buttons around her neck, and this one, buttons again, I, love, I used a lot of buttons, and this one, and here's another one of the fabric beads that I made, and a couple of her little pins, and some pins hanging from with buttons on them at the bottom so I really enjoyed making these it's just that the timing was so weird that I didn't go any further with them and make them grungy but I think they turned out cute so let me show you the next thing a lot of you will probably remember the junk your stuff art journals that I made and there is a video that I showed you how I made mine and in the video you'll see there's leftover square pieces because you cut them off and you don't use them and I said I would eventually use these for something. So I'm in the process of using these up for different things. But the first thing I use these for, I'll show you the back, just plain paper and the front there, is to make these. I made these little dolls. And these are made from those squares. Okay, so this used to be the square, and I just cut out a doll design and then decorated her with fabric and stuff, give her little arms. So I'll go through these real quick. And they're stringy, because I haven't cut all the strings off, which is typical of me. <laughs> My mother would have a bit. And these just hang behind me on a ribbon. They're may be a video on these. I haven't decided yet. I, I really just don't know. I 
I love her. I love all of them. And the thing about these that really interests me, I thought was funny, is they're made of paper. So stuffing them, you cannot get a real good stuff on them. They don't smooth out real well. So some of them got kind of crinkled in the making. And so they have this look on their face like they've eaten sour lemons or sour grapes or something. And so let's see if there's another one. Here's kind of one. So they had these funny looks on their face that make me laugh because they look like they're just kind of, I don't know, pursing their lips like they're a little bit perturbed with whatever's going on like this one here. <laughs> it's so funny. So that's what I made with those. See, these are the, the kinds of things you can do with scraps of just paper and fabric. I mean, it's really, these are simple. Those squares, I you know, you might have thrown them away, but instead of throwing them away, now I've got these cute little dolls and I've got more ideas for them that I plan on implementing at some point. It'd probably take me a few years to get them all used up because I jump around from thing to thing, but that's the kind of stuff you can do. So just think outside the box and think about things that you could do with the stuff you might normally throw away. So, okay, the last thing I'm gonna share with you is what I've kind of got in the works. So the next thing I've got going on is this. I don't know what this is going to be. This might be a journal. I haven't decided, but I'm using up a scrap paper, scrapbook paper pad. And what I'm doing is finding different ways to use the paper and hopefully creative ways. And so in this particular batch of things I'm making, what I do is I take a 12 by 12 piece of paper and I'm folding it in half. And then I'm taking other papers that blend with it that come from the pad and I'm just putting strips on there in different directions and a side. So see that that would normally be glued shut and then all this paper added. And then I'm going to be running it through the sewing machine and putting different things on it and making a possible journal out of it. So that's kind of in the works. One more thing I forgot to share with you that I'm actually currently working on. And all these are, are tags where I took extra paint and I put extra paint on them and like wiped up paint on the mat, like this one here. Um, you have paint down on your paint mat and you want to clean up the excess but you don't want to waste it. You take a tag or an index card or paper and you just wipe across and that's what I get. Or I use my stencils and clean my stencils off on, on tags or whatever. So I just was starting this. I started this in Chris, around Christmas time. Everybody else was making Christmas ornaments and I was making heart tags. <laughs> that's just how I roll. <laughs> I just cut the centers out of all these tags because I was sitting at my desk and I had an hour to play and I was just, I don't know, I couldn't get involved in anything major. So I just cut the hearts out and that's where these came from. And I don't know what I'll do with them yet, but probably gonna associate them with something here. And then I took drop paper that I have in a, a container that I, I keep. I think I said earlier in the video, but I just keep them for when I need a project. I backed all the cards with it. So this is deli paper that was backed. So there's front and back done. This is an index card where I did some testing for some little pins that I've got. And so you can see that's an index card, little lines. And so I backed it with that. So I'll probably put another backing on here to finish off this tag whenever I come around to finishing them. But that's what that is. It peeks through the hole. And this one, same thing. That's, that's a newsprint, I think, that was straw paper at one point. Same with this. Same with that, I think, deli paper. This is deli paper. I jelly printed the excess paint off the jelly print on both sides. And this is the same thing. Um, deli paper, I think. Or no, that's just regular printer paper. If it's white, it's printer paper. That's newsprint. This is a, you can see through there a little bit. The little inserts you get in your magazines and things that fall out all over the place when you get a magazine. Um, I keep those and I use them and that's what that is and it's just got excess paint on it and I covered it with that. So you see this little barcode back here, a little cart code there. This is from a magazine called Bicycling. My husband get, used to get it. And this is just an old advertisement type paper I think. And that's uh, deli paper. And this is book text that I covered with napkins and that's what that is right there and there. And then the outside is just the tag. The other thing I'm working on, if you remember, some of you will, some of you are new and won't remember, there is a video 
about how to make these. I think it's called Pockets and Posies, something like that. And this is using up the same scrapbook paper pad. And these are 12 by 12 sheets of paper cut in half and then made into pockets. So you get two pockets for one sheet of paper. And so what I've got going on is a stack of those. They are in progress. They are not finished. I've started adding the extra little bits and things, and these will be sewed on in the, on the sewing machine. I'll show you these real quick, because you know how to make these now. You've seen the video. If you haven't, go check out the video. That's a piece of a printout of a piece of art that I did a long time ago when I first started. And once these are done, I'll add some embellishment like a flower or something like that. I don't know. I'm trying to keep all the stuff together. Some of it's glued a little bit to stay on and some of it's not. But I'm just showing you that some of it doesn't even match. It's no rhyme or reason. It's just there. And this is using up bits and pieces of scraps and stickers and extra papers. These used to be these were from index cards where I created inches, and there's a video for that somewhere way back. And um, so I'm using that on here. And this was a gift from someone that had a little kiss in it. I took it apart and used the front. So stuff like that. This just came from um, something I bought. I can't remember what now. <laughs> Thought it was cute. That's just part of packaging. I know I'm going quickly, but I didn't want to spend all day showing you these because once they're done, I'll show them to you again in another video. Oops. Die cuts, I'm getting rid of some of the die cuts and using them up. This here is just a little sticker sheet that had round circles in it. I've used the circles, there's the negative space, and I just used it on here. There's one of the circles right there, actually. Okay. So those will turn into these eventually, and you can stick little things in here. So, okay, I'll see you later. I hope you have a great day, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.